Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you again for joining us for another um, weekly edition of Condo Insider that is put on by Hawaii Council of Community Associations. So welcome to our show for this week. And in a few few minutes, we are going to introduce our um, guest, who is Derek Ariyoshi with the um, Elderly Affairs Division. Hi, Derek. Yeah, Raylene, thank you so nice much. For nice to see you. Same here. Appreciate the opportunity to join you and your audience on the show and, and hopefully share some helpful information for them. So thank you again. Yeah, thank you for participating in, the, in our education efforts with Hawaii Council. And one of the main things that we wanted to um, reach out to Elderly Affairs with is um, because there's a growing population of aging and Honolulu is supposed to be an aging in place city is characterizing mm -hmm. the place as a, one of the best aging in place cities. And um, we, since we deal with a lot of condos and with condos, you have maintenance fees and they only go up, they don't go down. Mm -hmm. So even in my own condo, there's some retirees and they're already starting to feel the pinch. Um, and not just money wise, but also, um, um, some of them are healthcare. Like I know one that has Parkinson's and I've kind of started to see her really deteriorate and it's kind of getting scary. Um, so let's go through what elderly affairs is. It's part of the city and county of Honolulu and it's been around for how long? Give us a little bit about how long it's been around. Well, since, uh, close to 1965 with the establishment of the federal law that guides all our services and programs called the Older Americans Act. So yeah, we're, we're approaching a good amount of years being the area agency on aging for the island of Oahu. And if you'll al allow me to share that designation as the area on aging uh, is an important one, uh, as it really, uh, the federal law, like I said, Older Americans Act, uh, tasks us as a AAA or area agency on aging to help support a a web or network of services and supports for older adults and now caregivers uh, to best support them to be able to live uh, uh, engaged and healthy on their own terms within their own homes and communities and trying to work with other community partners and other services in our charge uh, to do exactly that. And each county has um, an office similar to yours. So Kauai would have their own Maui, mm -hmm. yeah. Island, right? Okay, so it's not just exclusive to Honolulu County. Each county has their own um, um, division. That's, so go ahead. what is the types of services that you provide through yeah. elderly? Yeah, and you set it up perfectly. I, I think exactly that. Very similar uh, because of our funding from federal and state governments. Our services are similar to other county area agencies on aging. So when we talk about support services to live in own homes and communities, uh, generally they reference as home and community-based services. I know you're familiar with that uh, terminology, uh, but mainly things that you're familiar with in the community, uh, for instance, and you can let me know if you're familiar, uh, home delivered meals, for instance, is one, mm -hmm. personal care services, largely uh, bathing services when we talk about that, uh, homemaker, attendant care type of services, but other uh, community-based types of services too, like for example, uh, congregate meal sites and services where uh, older adults can congregate and socialize at a physical uh, location. We have adult daycare services as well. But I'll point out, and I'm curious on your feedback too, is that what we saw during the pandemic where there was a extreme food needs and health and social service needs what we realized quickly, and you can let me know if you saw the same, was the need for social connectivity. And that, that was surprising, yet not surprising, and it elevated on our radar to make sure our programs really support the holistic needs of the individual. No, it was. It, it, it created an isolation, even for people that live in single family homes. Mm -hmm. You know, um, they, and it's gotten to the point where, you know, they, they were so used to how many years that we, you know, was limited ability to go out. And so they kind of adapted to that. And now it's a chore to get them out, you know, mm -hmm. like, come on, let's go out. We can go out. Let's, let's go for a walk or something, you know, or, or get out. Um, so it's now going to have to almost like reprogram ourselves 
mm-hmm. to be able to go out into the public and not, you know, feel like we're going to get infected with something. Um, I think COVID is just like the flu. It's going to be here forever. You know, um, it, it's just another um, another virus that's pretty much going to be around. So every year, everybody's still got to do their their vaccinations and do all that kind of stuff. But let's talk about the population uh, and just within Honolulu County, because it's an alarming amount of seniors and it's mm-hmm. only getting bigger. That number is only getting bigger. Mm-hmm. So uh, again, uh, really astute point. Uh, I would say maybe reframing it. Uh, we do have the largest kupuna population, obviously, in the state. I think last I checked, the ballpark, maybe 250,000 older adults, 60 years, uh, and I'll say better. Uh, and by 2040, maybe, so representing right now, maybe a quarter of our state's total population. And maybe by 2040, I see and hear some estimates that maybe close to one third of our total population, depending on what survey or report you reference. But your point being um, is that there are definite uh, opportunities for us uh, as a larger community to make sure that the services, infrastructure programs can support uh, the growing older adult populations. And that requires an investment that requires some thoughtful strategies, building of programs and infrastructure, yes. But I would also say there's huge opportunities for our state and community as well, because you take both sides of it, right? Uh, A good population that has a lot of resources, knowledge, expertise, passions, et cetera, that we are and should tap into. So it's, 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 it's kind of understanding the both, the opportunity as well as the challenge. And I think if we can keep that uh, that framework or that mindset, um, I, th- I think that just helps the larger community and state push forward to kind of address, address some of these challenges and opportunities as well. As a service provider to the community, mm-hmm. do you find um, the, the language barriers are, are, is part of some of the... Um, inability of some people to reach out for your services. Mm -hmm, For sure, for sure. And I think what we see is probably similar to what you folks see as well. And, you know, we talk about the uh, both sides of the coins, right? The the beauty of Hawaii and our populations, the diversity of culture and ethnicities is mirrored by our kupuna population. So to answer your question, definitely, is that we, the the, the richness of our culture and language, uh, et cetera, there's so much to that of who we are, but but the language barriers is a barrier for sure uh, that we've seen in particular during the pandemic play out, language barriers. So when we talk about food access or vaccine access, largely those were mass sites, right? It required registration of those services uh, online and definitely was problematic to help support those individuals with limited speaking uh, abilities. And we as a community, and I'm going to task and challenge our agency too, is that we're going to have to be thoughtful and strategic to make sure that we can support those individuals uh, with limited English abilities. Not only only English speaking, but it's the access. Because remember, everything Mm -hmm. had to be, lately, everything's got to be done online. Mm -hmm. So there's Mm -hmm. no more picking up the phone and just making the appointment. You know, so you with the elderly, you also have that that lack of maybe being able to even access the internet or even have a computer. Mm-hmm. You know, right. so when we talk about in in a um, community living, you know, mm-hmm. and you're talking about condos, um, I think some condos have to start realizing that within their own community, their own condo, um, that um, they have to start changing and not being so private kind of and start maybe making making like a computer accessible to an elderly because they need to log in and be a little bit more patient to help them. I know mm-hmm. sometimes it could be challenging, but um they have to have that level of patience, you know, to be able to give that or, you know, mm-hmm. encourage a neighbor to help them out, mm-hmm. something like that to help schedule the appointment. Um, because that can be frustrating for someone that that can't navigate that thing. I mean, and just like 
when the pandemic started, everything was on Zoom. And I'm like, I have to go to my nephews, nieces, and I go, how does this work? <laughs> Teach me how this works. I have to do this for work. <laughs> I can relate. <laughs> it was just so embarrassing. You have to go to them to figure out how to work. You know? <laughs> but you're speaking my love language. I mean, yeah. I mean, so much of what you say uh, uh, really connects with me and is so true is that, you know, with your uh, condo association and your listeners, yeah, absolutely. I think kind of being mindful of the residents and the diversity and some of the language ac access barriers, like you said, language, digital, et cetera. But you know what? I'm going to have a larger ownership that it's a, a community wide ownership of that. So yes, along with my office, along with uh, your your group, your membership, right, is uh, really identifying how we collectively can support better access uh, uh, and support. Uh, for our older adults and or uh, residents as well. And it's working together and, and kind of creating and motivating each other and inspiring each other to be able to take on that charge is where we're going to really move the needle. And, and Yeah, and that's one of the things I think several years ago, I think it was um, then Senator Chan Oakland, um, and now she's with Catholic Charities, but she always envisioned some condo communities that have like community rooms or they have an air open area that they can put table and chairs to allow the seniors to come make it their own McDonald's stop, you know, mm -hmm. instead of driving out, they can stay within their own community um, and, and do that with their neighbors and talk story, share information, you know, um, and that's how some of the information gets disseminated as well, you know, and the support system will be helpful, you know, for Love those it. seniors. Love it. Um, I'll, I'll share with you. Uh, so, I mean, we have a wonderful opportunity in front of us uh, as far as our state and our community. So, you know, with regard to digital access, uh, there's a good amount of federal funds that are making its way to states and, and communities. So exactly like you said, is that if we can be forward thinking and kind of strategizing how to build infrastructure and services and programs that allow older adults and those other vulnerable populations to be able to better access, the internet and that really is the new age uh key to the door right is everything the, the ship has already sailed as far as uh virtual type of services so if we can be forward thinking as a community and as a state to kind of strategize again how do we support infrastructure programs and services then that'll make us more competitive uh to access uh those funds so i'm excited for for that challenge to be honest yeah yeah so let's get back to condos um, and your services. So um, I know you guys do like, um, you guys do the Meals and Wheels or food um, have food deliveries, things like that, right? Yep, so um, one of the concepts was too about doing the show was, you know, maintenance fees are only going up. So, and so the obligation is they have to pay their maintenance fees first. Some of them might be free and clear of a mortgage, but they still have that maintenance fee and it's only going, getting worse. Mm -hmm. So, some of them financially are facing challenges on their own because they're going to pay the maintenance fee first. Otherwise they get kicked out. They can get foreclosed on. So how can um, a senior reach out to elderly affairs for, for like food? Okay. So uh, let me add context first though. Um, when we look at any services and supports, including elderly affairs division, I think the first place we should look is not limit services or programs to one organization. It's like, what does the larger uh, uh, community and service network uh, look like as far as service and supports? And we'll stick with food, right? Uh, so first understanding that, and then working with organizations like uh, Elderly Affairs Division, and you can, folks can call our senior helpline at 768-7700. Uh, again, 768-7700. And then our staff will do our best to provide options counseling. But going back to your point, really, is when we take that call and staff do our best to kind of hear what the situation is and sticking to the food example, right, is that we'll ask some questions. Like, do they have the physical ability and capacity uh, to uh, acquire the food or is it uh, financial or economic, right? Because that really depends on what direction an individual should be steered towards. So, for example, if they have the physical ability to to uh, obtain food, cook food, prepare food, et cetera, then the likely the first place we would look uh, look towards is 
uh, the SNAP program, right? Because the last data I saw is that um, SNAP utilization, especially older adults, is really underutilized. And really, there isn't uh, established reason or understanding why it's underutilized, but I suspect that it might be some of the cultural stigmatism of, of Hawaii and shame or not wanting to lose face in accessing public programs and services, uh, which is actually contradicts why the programs are in the first place to, to support those people that you just mentioned, right? Fixed incomes, et cetera. So that's one program. Now we have other programs like Medicaid, for instance, uh, that also provide similar programs to those folks with uh, uh, limited fi uh, financial resources. And then you have our types of programs that kind of fills in some of the gap. But our home delivered meal program, uh, for instance, are for homebound uh, 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 older adults. So if, if when we do an assessment, which we're required to do to be able to access our services, we'll ask them a whole series of questions to establish their capacity, right? Uh, and if uh, we determine in the assessment that they're homebound, that they have um, activities of daily living uh, challenges, uh, then they may be eligible for our services. And we will- oh, are there, oh, sorry to interrupt, are there two SNAP providers? Like one is state and there's a city and county or is it just the it's one? It's just a state SNAP program. Okay. Oh, okay, so you will help them if they if you think that they qualify, you will help them enroll in SNAP. Uh, we'll help them. Uh, so there's a lot of, um, so for instance, uh, the state SNAP program actually contracts with uh, SNAP uh, outreach offices, some of our nonprofits, for example, uh, Lanakila actually uh, Pacific being one. So what we would do is that we're the connectors. So in kind of doing the pre-screening and assessing their needs, uh, we will do our best to steer them and connect them to those organizations that would do exactly that, help with the enrollment, help with the processing, and get them to the door. Yeah. Okay, that that's really cool because that's what I was kind of referring to it at a at a meeting that we had um, a month ago. Is, is connecting the dots. Mm -hmm. You know, you see a meet a senior, and um, I think one of my biggest things that's sensitive to me is someone that is possibly in dementia stages, memory loss. Um, and, and maybe because, um, my auntie was like that and we had no clue. We're just like, why is she acting like that? You know? And, um, and, and somebody else may have met her and then think that she's crazy or that she's kind of like losing it, you know, but it's, it's recognizing, um, some of the issues and not just writing them off as being, you know, weird or whatever, you know, it's, um, it's all connecting, connecting the dots and recognizing certain things that um can connect that person or recommend that person to seek like i just did to somebody else um i said you need to call this number and you have to do it today you know <laughs> and i go don't let the name fool you because it they will take anybody <laughs> you know you don't have to be hawaiian even though the name says hawaiian you don't have to be hawaiian so, but you have to call them you know so it's it's really connecting them to the right places um and really going for you guys first because you know those agencies that you have a dot now you need to just match them with the right dot yeah i i was yeah i would agree i i would uh i'm curious if you remember this thing you know as far as uh raising children right they'll say that it takes a village right but um but in some ways it's similar for our older for those older adults who are needing support right it takes a a, a good support network right yeah uh, raising yeah. a village so i would say for sure um lean into uh, elderly affairs division but i would say uh with kupuna and any uh, population right is that we have to take advantage of the touch point with kupuna when we have the touch point so meaning as a community if we can educate ourselves by your invitation of me being on the show today right understanding what resources and supports we do and what's out in the community is that when we have a touch point with Kupuna, either ourselves or you or someone else, we have a base level knowledge already that we can draw upon and we won't lose the opportunity and we won't lose that touch point with Kupuna. Right, yeah, because even um, SMP guys are gonna be on the show um, in a couple of weeks too, but, and, and again, it was really about condos, financial, because maintenance fees again are only going up. And so how can we um, 
get Kapunas to rely on other um, or reach out to other services um, because they're on limited income typically, you know, so how can they reach out to these other agencies to help them out financially? Um, and, you know, and SNAP is one and they just got to get over that, you know, the stigma, but still, you know, they've, they've worked all their lives, mm-hmm. you know, and they just need to get over, you know, um, of having to, um, or reaching out to, to SNAP. I mean, but you know, to me, they they worked all their lives. You I know, agree. I agree. <laughs> they bought their place, but now you know it's just it's just the way it is in a condo. Um, I agree, and, and in in that village type of concept, right, is is letting our kukuna know uh, and and giving them the okay, the approval to do exactly what you said, right? Like, is removing that stigma uh, off of their shoulders and saying no you know you put your time in you you contributed to our state and our community now it's our time in some ways to be able to support you right 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 you know so yeah that's really lifting them up so they don't i mean they're already depressed in some ways now it's just trying to lift them back up Mm -hmm. so that they can be proud of themselves for sure for sure. And I think where the magic really happens and where we have opportunities, especially for, uh, I think, your membership is that when we can create an environment, whether a community and or a condo unit even, right, that you have many older adults that are wanting and motivated to, to give back and contribute to the community, but even amongst uh, uh the fellow and other older adults too right but when we cr- when we give the environment and the space and empower them and give the opportunity to do that you have many older adults who are wanting to help others yeah yeah you see yeah. that right yeah you know mm-hmm. and i know so many people so many um you know adults um my age or even younger and they they've said that they'd rather see their parents live in a condo than in a single family as they age Interesting. Because you have that surrounding area, you know, um, and and I always tell the condo condo people, I said, you know, you 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 don't want to, you don't necessarily need to be in the alley on your neighbors, but you normally know their routine a little bit. Like usually, they go to work at a certain time, they come home at a certain time, mm-hmm. they walk their dog, whatever, you know. But if if you see something odd in their behavior, is where you need to be a little bit open about it. If you haven't seen them in a couple of days, you know, and, and their car is still in the parking lot, but normally they're always out and about, you know, that's kind of a, a little bit of a red flag to make mm-hmm. that alert. And you want that community um, yep. awareness and togetherness, um, you know, because um, I've heard some horror stories of some condos. And I'm like, oh, my God, the smell must have been horrendous alone you know, <laughs> for that person to have been like that for that long. But um so what are some other um, takes? I, and I know you guys were really, really impacted by COVID. I mean, you guys just went into high gear. Department of Health went into high gear. They had that one guy that they that was helping to organize a lot of that stuff. Um, he, was, he was, I forgot his name, but um, he was very, very good in, in organizing and pointing fingers. And, and I was just, I was just impressed because I was, I was involved in one. And I'm like, well, oh, he's just barking orders. I'm like, everybody's paying attention. <laughs> it was so cool. I was like, wow, this is happening, you know? So what words of wisdom can you give to the community about your services? I, I would say together we're better and stronger. Uh, so uh, I, if the question is more specific to our services, I would say feel free to reach out our senior helpline, 768-7700. And then we'll do our best to provide some options counseling and hopefully steer folks to to the resources uh, that might help them. Then on the larger response is uh, maybe a call out uh, to our community is that that opportunity to come together has already been demonstrated, like you said, Raylene, during the pandemic, some very inspiring and uplifting uh type of partnerships and coordinations to make sure no kupuna get left behind whether it be food or vaccines that energy is still there and we have groups like the kupuna collective now in the hundreds of people just coming together trying to problem solve these issues so i guess that would be the answer and that would be the charge 
uh, or call out is when we can stop the finger pointing, the temptation to do the finger pointing, and and look at it as an opportunity for us to to come together in solidarity and be inspired by each other to kind of problem solve these issues. Uh, that energy gets multiplied, and that's where big and great things uh, happen. So that, that would be my my share. So um, as a as um, a little recap, so for a lot of people that live in condos that are facing, especially the Kakuna, the seniors. You know, it is time to reorganize, to take a look at your finances, um, take a look at what services you can engage in through either elderly affairs. And then our next one will be um, Medicaid, because um, like you said earlier, there's some other services that they might be able to get through Medicaid, you know, mm -hmm. that they pay, you know, they pay that. So um, they need to take advantage of what they pay, mm -hmm. um, you know, pay into and take those services back. So hopefully this will help ease some of the financial burden on some of these um elderly, some of these seniors that, um, you know, living in a condo is still one of the best options for a lot of people. But then again, you have that cost of that rising maintenance fee. So hopefully this mm -hmm. might help to um, alleviate some of that financial burden and take advantage of what they've worked for their entire lives. Well said. You know, they worked it. Take advantage of it. You know, they deserved it. <laughs> well said. Agreed. <laughs> okay. Derek, I want to thank you so much for being on the show today with me. Um, this was very enlightening. Um, I did learn a few things as well, too. You know, so it was really quite enlightening for me. And um, we are going to share this with our condo community. And we hope that um, our audience will take to task what they have learned on this show today. Yeah, th thank you. I enjoyed myself and you're a kind and gracious host. So I, I enjoyed my time with you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.